Hey guys, today I'm going to be giving you five in-depth ability tips for Viper. Viper is currently a, a pretty strong pick still. She used to be even stronger, but as of now, Brim and Omen are currently a little better than her on most maps. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to be giving you uh, the first tip, which is understand which maps Viper is currently strongest on. So currently, Viper's ma uh, strongest map is definitely Breeze, and that's why I chose this map to kind of showcase everything to you. So Viper's strongest map is definitely Breeze because there's so many walls you can pretty much do everywhere. As you can see, each site and each area of the map is very wide open, which makes her wall very, very strong, unlike other maps. Uh, Viper's other strongest maps are Icebox and Fracture. I'd say Fracture's actually better than Icebox, but uh, Viper on B specifically is really good on Icebox. Fracture, she's good on both A and B site. Better on B site probably for Fracture, but this map, Viper is an absolute monster. Um... Pretty much because of her walls, Molly's uh, ult's also really good here. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next tip, which is learn the best walls and orbs uh, for her strongest map. So, of course, we are on the strongest map. I have this default wall here for uh, A site on Breeze. If you want to throw this one, I'll go ahead and show it to you because why not? Um, you just come into this corner and you line up your wall right here. Uh, and you can use the mini map here for... Uh, you're basically splitting this pyramid in half. And if you come out here, you can see... This pretty much allows your team to kind of clear close and then come all the way up and you can have access to this. Uh, a site on Breeze is a map you really want to be kind of fighting for because both teams have similar advantages and this Viper Wall um, really helps your team fight. So another uh, thing if you're attacking is you can throw an orb right here. You can learn a lineup for this, but this orb is good because in combination with the wall, it basically allows your team to have full control of all of this area. And the only thing you have to worry about is getting flashed through the walls. And of course, in lower ranks, this is probably something you'll definitely want to be uh, cautious of. Um, for higher ranks, people don't push through walls as much, but they still will try it. Um, you, have, you have to be careful of getting tagged by drone, darts, all this kind of stuff. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so for defending here, we can use a different kind of wall. We can split the wall just kind of like right here. This is a pretty good wall. And a good orb is just like right here, a little bit deep into this. And this pretty much covers everything. It forces them to kind of, you know, fight, wait for this to fall or just kind of fight inside of it, which is kind of your domain. Um, anyways, I'll actually go ahead and go to B side because why not? I'll show you guys some more walls. So if you want a wall for attack, the most common wall is basically just like kind of somewhere here, splitting yeah. this probably Probably further over this way, so you don't Here. have to worry about someone hiding in cubby. So like this or something. And this allows you again to just take Here. and worry about fighting sight. Um, so then you don't have to worry about getting killed from mid, don't have to worry about from back here or spawn. And then you, your team, and you can just focus on everything towards sight. On defense, again, this is like a perfect choke for you, so you can just orb right here. Probably a little bit deeper than that actually, but maybe like back here. And then, again, they're always going to have to, whenever they come toward B and you activate this orb, they're always going to have to worry about you pushing this. And it's really just uh, probably going to make people avoid you if you're um, not in, like, Radiant or High Immortal. Because people uh, do not like pushing into a Viper, I'll tell you that. Actually, one more wall for defense here. Um, again, we're kind of doing the same one as A. You kind of just wall off the, the front site here. Here, I would probably throw it, like, like right here. So, this is where... This is where the site ends, right here. here. So try to kind of like cut that off slightly, um, like really here. close to this. Cause then you can, if, if you hear them planting and you can't see them, you know they have to be in this like tiny sliver right here. So you can kind of just spam them through the wall. Cause you know, this is like where everyone plants. So that's a really good defensive wall. And I feel like a lot of Vipers actually don't really use that. So uh, high rank Viper wall for you guys. Hopefully that is helpful for some of you, you know, potentially newer or lower ranked Viper players. Anyways, moving on to the next tip. Uh, is play around your mollies when defending or attacking uh, sites or the spike. So um, let me go back to A real quick just to kind of you know, swap things up because again, A site I feel like is the site that the majority of fights happen on this map, especially in my games. Um, not always, but most of the time I feel like A is uh, definitely a site you want to get comfortable with. So defending, whenever you are, say I throw this molly and this is my setup. Um, again, this orb is pretty nice. But if I hear them, they're like dogging or droning, I'm going to instantly molly this to try to slow them down and prevent them from pushing. I probably want to keep it in the middle just to like, you know, make sure they can't just sneak their way out. Uh, maybe a little bit deeper. Maybe you could molly like inside here, um, you know, 
because if it's like a Sova droning from there, that's really good. You can stop their drone. Smarter Sovas will drone from farther away. And you, it's a little bit harder to do that, but um, that's a way you, you can uh, consider this. Also, one more thing before I talk about more mollies you can be doing. Um, mollies actually make you vulnerable. So you can see down here in the bottom, the whole time you're standing in it and then for like a couple of seconds after you get out of it, you are very vulnerable. I think you take double damage. If I'm incorrect about that number, you guys can let me know in comments, but I think you take double damage. So like a jet knife will do 100 uh, damage per thing. So that's very strong, right? If you're trying to push someone and you know, like back here, uh, an attack or something, we, we have this wall up, then you can just take the fight. Cause if you know you're gonna hit them, like say you, the person's right in the middle of this molly, bang, they're definitely hit by it. So then that basically means you need half the number of shots to kill your opponent, which is like really strong, right? And if you have certain guns, you're going to be killing them very fast. So just keep that in mind. And yes, yeah, so like two sheriff shots to the body. Like that's very strong. Um, also understand you have lineups. I don't know lineups, but you can have lineups and then your molly will land right on where the spike is, which should be like right around here. And so then you can just play time. Understand that you don't even need lineups. Like if you know that there's, say we have this orb and you know that they're coming to, you know, stick the spike, you can just go like this and they can't do anything like you just play time if you're confident in your ability to you know throw this molly successfully that's going to really allow you to stall at time and just win rounds straight up for your team so keep that in mind make use of your mollies and don't die with your mollies if you're defending something or you're attacking make sure you at least try to use one of your mollies before you die because i understand if you molly once you're probably going to get pushed a lot of the time so at least try though right if you're not even considering mollying you're missing out because this this ability is really strong Anyways, guys, moving on to the next tip, ask at least one teammate to play in your Viper ult. And so basically what this does is it strengthens an already very strong ult. So Viper ult's very strong. Its main problem is that you can get flanked in it pretty easily by people that are uh, not very scared. But you also do decay damage, and I believe this it's very it gets you down to 1 HP, right? So if you're fighting people that are 1 HP, that's very good. So you can actually ult. Most Vipers play B on this map, right? So, you know, you can just ult B and then tell your team, like, yo, stack A, or like 3A, 1 mid, and I have, I have B. Because, you know, there's a pretty good chance, especially in lower ranks, that people are not going to push into the Viper ult. They're just scared of it, right? If you're a lower rank and you see a Viper ult, let's be honest, you probably avoid it a lot of the time. I even try to avoid it most of the time. So, you know, just tell your team, like, yo, stack A, they've been going A, I'll just make sure that they can't come B. And just be careful that you can't get flanked from elbow, because, again, this is how, this is kind of how you can get killed from Viper ult, but... Also keep in mind now, I'll just go ahead and Viper ult this. So I think this is kind of like a normal ult. And it'll come up to about up into here. And as you can see, this is, um, this might've been a bit too far actually. You might want it back a little bit more because I don't really play Viper. So I don't know how far out it goes like that, but just, you want it like a little bit here. That's the one I usually see in higher ranks, just like a little bit out. And then if you're attacking and you see this, like you're not gonna want to push into this, right? Unless you get like a dog or a drone. And that requires communication from your the enemy team so here you can see if i step out it says smoke integrity so i think you can be outside of the thing for 15 seconds uh i might be wrong about that but i'm pretty sure it's 15 seconds and if you come back in it quickly regenerates like double double as fast as if you're out of it so um you can do this and you can like you know hold mid or you know just kind of be aware that you can come out of it and you can really outplay people so again ask a teammate to play in this don't not this one specifically but if you're like ulting for sight let's go back to a again so i can give you guys some more you know tips for a site for viper so let's say we're attacking right we have the we have what we need here uh take control of the site you have the spike down here you ult and a lot of the time what your teammates will do is they'll kind of just avoid your ults which kind of sucks so again i don't know if this is actually a good viper ult you could probably do it like over here more, over here more. I don't really know. Probably back here would be better or right here is fine, I would guess. Um, Cause then your team can kind of play up like this, which is really good. And again, remember to use the mollies. Um, try to save it for the spike. So if the spike's right here, you know, again, you don't have to be inside of your ult. You can just kind of chuck it and then like look over here. You have your wall up. You know, this is very dangerous for the enemies. And tell your teammates to play it. So that tip, like have someone tell them to like, yo, play right side of my ult, please. I'll cover the backside. And careful middle, middle side, right? You can just walk up like this. And just really, I think probably playing on the outskirts of your ult is probably best. Because if you play like right here, um, enemies will a lot of time kind of just walk into you and not be looking like right here to clear this. Because they're more concerned with this side, right? So really getting comfortable around your Viper ult and just inside of it, I think is really important. So once you can do that, um, 
you know, you're gonna be chilling, and you can again cancel your ult, which can be really good if you know there's like a couple people in, your team's ready to just like spray them down whenever they're not expecting it. So um, that's another little added bonus. Um, and other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide. Um, I really don't like this map, and I kind of understood that Viper's a really core part of it, even though I don't play Viper or controllers. So I thought a guide for how to play Viper at this point in time would be really helpful. Also, I remember Fracture is probably her second best map, in my opinion, and then Icebox is right behind that. Other than that, she's probably not the best right now for other maps, just because you have Brim and Omen, but uh, Brim and Omen basically can't be played on this map at all. On Fracture, they can be. Um, the reason they can't be played on this map is just because... It's really hard to smoke everything out that you need to smoke. Like they don't you just don't they just can't do it. And Viper can. So hopefully they make more maps that are good for Viper or maybe give Viper maybe not a buff, but maybe make her meta to her meta again. Nerf the other smokers. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one and peace.